in today's video I want to actually speak about some questions which I'm seeing a lot in my comment section and it's the question of you know lightning and general grounding bonding of my off-grid system can I do one leave the other does it belong together how is this you know there's a lot of things to clarify in this regard because it is of course a very complex topic here about lightning and grounding and this kind of stuff so this video is only there to clarify what I have answered already in the comment section to many people and maybe uh, when we can see this on the sheet of paper that it would be a little bit clearer so yes stay with me and we will go into the details it won't take too long okay so let's look into the details of our topic so we are dealing with lightning and we're when we are dealing with lightning we are actually dealing with two separate circuits right we have our natural circuit we have our source of power is the earth itself and when humidity rises up in the air the air is ionized and it will kind of collect as a negative potential in the clouds and then we have another circuit this is what we have built up our technical circuits our electricity in our houses or in our RVs whatsoever and in this case how I have drawn it up here is that we have an off-grid system which is isolated so we have an IT system we only have our inverter and using the L and N and connecting to our loads but there is no grounding uh, done in this case so let's see what happens if a lightning strikes in this case we have on one side our lightning arresting system on our house so we have a lightning arrester here and it's connected to a grounding rod here and on the other side second case here is a, just a nearby tree so when the lightning strikes into the tree and the current is also then going back to earth so in any case what we are talking about is of course that current needs to go back to its source where it is originated so lightning can only go back to the earth because earth is the source of the potential in any way so the current will either travel through the tree to earth or through our lightning arrester to earth the problem now is what happens when current is traveling nearby of wiring whenever a current is flowing somewhere doesn't matter in our case now we are talking about the lightning current either it's going straight to the tree or it's going through our lightning arrester when we have current flowing and in the case of lightning it's a very high current every time current is flowing it is actually building up a magnetic field around it so here in case of the tree we have magnetic field lines going with the current or when it travels through our lightning arrester we have a magnetic field also building up so what happens now when a magnetic field is coming into contact to wiring so on the other side we have now our wiring inside of our installation so we know that from equipment like transformers every time when you have magnetic fields when you have wiring we have a primary coil to say like this and a secondary coil which will be our wiring here our installation voltage is generated on the secondary side 
the current which is traveling through our lightning arrestor or through our tree will induce a voltage on our electrical installation just because the magnetic field is hitting our copper wires there. And let's see what this looks like and what it will actually cause in our installation. So these are now two graphs. We have voltage and time and in the normal situation we just have on our electrical installation we have our voltage, our frequency, our sine wave uh, going through our wires. And now we are dealing with the lightning. So you can already see the scale is much smaller. We have our sine wave and in this moment a lightning has hit either in our arresting system or into the tree nearby. The magnetic field starting to induce very very rapidly a voltage surge on our electrical system. So the voltage is rising, rising, rising. And where does the energy come from? Well, not from our system internally. It comes from outside. It comes from the lightning via the magnetic field. So where does this energy actually belong to? It does not belong to our electrical system. This does not come from our inverter. This comes from outside. So where does it have to go? This energy which is building up in our electrical system as a surge can only go to its place of origin and the place of origin is ground because the energy for the lightning came from ground so it only can return to the ground so but now in this case we know we are isolated so how can this energy go back to the ground well it can only go to ground by breaching the insulation somewhere. So the voltage will rise, 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 rise until a moment that the insulation cannot withstand the high voltage anymore. It will breach the insulation somewhere in an electrical appliance inside of the wiring itself. And in that moment, this energy will escape somewhere where it can find a way back to ground. So in the moment it breaches the insulation somewhere and it can find a way back to ground, it will start to reduce the potential again and go back to normal. But the problem in this case is that if this was an uncontrolled uh, breach here, that this will also mean that the appliance or maybe even more than one appliance where this breach happened is just toasted so this will be fried you can just dump it onto the garbage somewhere this is unusable equipment anymore so this is a very dangerous situation with a, a IT system when you are isolated from somewhere but you are getting energy induced into your system the voltage can only rise 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 until the moment it has to breach insulation somewhere the energy can escape to the ground somewhere it can go back to earth that will then reduce the surge again but it will always be together with the probably destruction of electrical equipment which you of course don't want to have so now what we have added is our grounding rod for our electrical system as well and we have created a neutral to ground bond here. So what does this mean if we have again a lightning strike? Doesn't matter, does it go through the nearby tree, does it go to our arrestor? The magnetic field will start to induce a voltage surge again in our wiring but this time we already have our connection to earth we have a path from the neutral wire here back to earth via our grounding rod here because we have created a tn system 
right? So now actually the, the energy which is introduced to our wiring by induction can flow immediately towards the point where it came from to the earth. And this is why it is important also to think about grounding of the off-grid system or of an RV, whatever. If you think that the risk of lightning at your place is high, you can only minimize uh, the risk of destruction in your electrical system by creating a ground link. So this was actually the reason why TN systems have been introduced into our grid uh, supply and some utility poles or uh, wires are hit by lightning. This energy need to go somehow back to Earth. Okay, but now one could say, okay, it's all very nice, but I still don't need to make a TN system for this. What I want to do is I just use surge protection devices on my AC side as well. So when there is a, a voltage surge induced, this will then be drawn down to the ground potential just by opening, you know, the varistors. Yes, but in this case, of course, you also have to trust a lot, again, this technical device of a surge protection device. And they, of course, allow a certain voltage to build up initially before they can draw down the surge to the ground. So in some cases, maybe that could be uh, somewhere, you know, the clamping voltage could be somewhere around 500, 600, 800 volts. So this voltage initially will, of course, build up everywhere until it will be clamped and then the energy removed out of your system again. And this can already uh, destroy a few very sensitive uh, devices. So it is probably better to go the way using a TN system and uh, remove the energy that way. On the DC side it's different. We only have our panels, we only have the inverter. The power lines should stay isolated normally so we do not connect the minus or the plus to the ground. So that's why in that case on the DC side of a solar inverter always use surge protection devices only but on the AC side we use also an AC surge protection device there but in general when the system is grounded, uh, bonded to ground, there is the normal path for extra energy which is introduced from outside would be actually the grounding bonds there. As you can see, grounding of inverters is important of many cases. It is not just, you know, keeping your electrical system in a safe environment by your voltage potentials, etc. It also has a lot to do with lightning, which could be sometimes missed in this con context. Okay, so for everybody who is asking question in this direction, does lightning have something to do with grounding bonding in general and stuff like that? Yes, this is all actually one big topic. So that's it. Thank you for watching this video. Please like, comment, subscribe to the channel and I see you next time.